might notice I didn't have the microphone on. Um, so you might notice that in front of you are lots of different shapes, sizes, and even colors of tulips and euphoniums. And so we're going to sort of walk you through all the different types of instruments that you see on the stage. So first, the typical tuba that most people think of as a tuba, well, depending on who you are, is this upright tuba. If you have a, a tuba, would you please raise it up for us? Because everybody see your tuba? So you can see different colors, different things. Those tubas are ranging anywhere between 16 and 18 feet long. So that means for me to you, I have to blow into that tube and make this sound. So the length of the tubing has everything to do with the register of the instrument. So the shorter the tubing, the higher pitch the instrument in general. So some of these are really big tubas. They're called contrabass tubas. And so they are either pitched in the key of B flat or C. And so if you have a B flat tuba, would you show it? Would you just raise your tuba up? That's a B flat tuba. Now you've got a couple of different things here. You see some have rotary valves. These are valves when you press them, they turn like that. Some are piston valves where you press them and they go like this. That lines up all the tubing. That's great. And then you can see you have different bells. This one way over here on the right is what's called a recording bass. It's what Bell Bell, Jack knows, is very famous for recording his first album on. Is that type of tuba that was used in a lot of studios for recording pieces like uh, Fantasia, if you would. Um, so those, that's a different bell front tuba is what you would call that in the modern world. That's also recording this. You might also notice that these big things with the bells pointed to you and they, they go over your shoulder. Everybody know what those are called? Sousaphones. Very good. So if you guys would sort of stand up for a second and see the sousaphone. And you might notice the ones on the, on the, on the outer side, which the silver ones, are probably ones you've seen. They're used mostly for marching. Not always. You might even notice like on Jimmy Fallon, his band, The Roots. Those band, that man has a sousaphone player in it. So there's a lot of popularity for it. But then you see this one in the middle. That's a shorter one. That's called a helicon. So that's a really cool tuba. I really like dig that tuba. Cool. Now, there are smaller tubas, and we call them bass tubas. So there's contrabass tubas, and there's bass tubas. And they're pitched in either E flat or F. So if you have an E flat tuba, we used to just sort of raise it up real quick. I know there's one out there somewhere. There it is. That's an E flat tuba. It's slightly longer than the F tuba, but shorter than the, the C tuba. And then F tubas. We got an F tuba. We use thick. There you go. Great. These are called bass tubas. They're pitched a little higher, so they're in between that and the euphonium. That's a an F tuba. Great. But they're all tubas. So they're contrabass and bass tubas. Then we get to the euphoniums. They hate the term tenor tuba. <laughs> I get it. They have their own identity though. Euphonium. Everybody, should raise up your euphonium if you have one. You'll notice they all do. So there's, there's a little trick here. Sometimes you'll hear euphoniums called baritones. And in America, we kind of use that as a generalized term. But a true baritone, ready for this? You can, you can really quiz your friends on this. What's the difference between a euphonium and a baritone? Okay. One, you can throw for it. No, that's not it. <laughs> the, the, the difference is how they're wrapped. So when you see these, these instruments, just like the tubas, the euphoniums are wrapped. And the tubing slightly gets bigger about one third of the way through the tube of the tubing, from the lead pipe through it starts getting bigger. And that diameter change makes the instrument more mellow. And because of that, that's what a euphonium does. A baritone does not get thicker until two thirds through the instrument, because that makes these two thirds cylindrical, and one third conical. I'm losing my voice. So, then what that means it's going to be brighter. We don't actually have a baritone here, but we do have a really special instrument. Perhaps my favorite instrument. We have the double bell euphonium. <laughs> yes. Do you mind demonstrating that? You will hear the sound come from two different places. You hear that? So, would you do that again? Here's the big bell. Here's the small bell. Yes. It has two different timbres, two different colors. It's a really, really cool instrument. So thank you for bringing that. That's awesome. That's a, like the most my favorite one. And you can almost play duets with yourself. <laughs> all right, so it's, it's a really great one. So those are all members of the tuba family. Did I forget anybody? We got them all? There are other things. Occasionally at these, at these tuba Christmases, you'll see a serpent. 
not a live serpent, an actual instrument. It actually looks like a snake, and that was the predecessor to the tuba. So that was written back. The tuba was invented in 1835, was when it was patented. And so before that, there were predecessors, and the serpent was one, and another one was an offercly, which had keys. So they're really interesting instruments. But these are the two, it's a sort of like the tuba euphonium family up here. So those are the instruments, right? So now we're gonna play another very popular carol. This is Carol of the Bells. You know, as a conductor, one of the hardest things you have to get used to when you have an ask on is you can't lick your fingers and turn the pages. <laughs> I, I like, I mean, with, with my wind ensemble and my orchestra that I conduct at UNC, SA, at UNC School of the Arts, there's been so many times when I'm just conducting with my head, trying to turn the page, can't the page, and I just have to drop this. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, this next piece we're going to feature students, our younger students in the ensemble. Would you raise your hand if you are currently a high school or middle school student? Awesome. All right. So we're going to actually feature them a little bit, and then we're going to ask you to sing again. So this is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It'll be a little two-bar introduction that everybody will play. Then you'll hear them play the first verse. And then the rest of the ensemble will come back in, and then I will turn around and ask you to join them. So featuring our high school students and middle school students, here is Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Okay, I think we have some fun things being passed out now, right? These are for the kids, right? All right, the kids, if you like to... What's that? Kids at heart as well. Yeah. All of you. So we have bells. Guess why we had bells? What would we play? Oh, Slay right now. What's the other one? Jingle bells. We're going to play some jingle bells. So. All right. Cool. And if you don't mind, can I grab a bell so I can keep it straight? We'll see if we get one. I don't want my keys on me. <laughs> Alright, cool. If you don't have a bell, you can always grab your keys. <laughs> I've done this many times. So, oh, you're gonna hand me a bell? Can I have a bell? Can I get I'll get it right back. I'll get it right back. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so if you've got bells, you wanna do this. Do this with me. Let's do that, or you can do this. You can do that, or you can just go back and forth, okay? But try to go, not back, back. Okay, here you go. Give those back to you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So, I will point to you when you do the jingle bell. Now, in the middle of the song, there's going to be what we call a break. It's going to break section. And it's actually a really famous trio of a very famous march called National Emblem. Um, and this is actually the march that whenever you go to a military function, whenever they move the colors, the flags, this is the, what the bands will play. I used to play in the Navy Band in D.C. I can tell you I've played this at least a thousand times. <laughs> okay? So, when you hear the march thing, that's what you do. So if you don't do the bells then, I'll cut you off on the bells, and then I'll bring you right back in, okay? All right, everybody have fun? Sing along, all right? We're gonna do a little two-bar introduction. Hey, jingle bells, let me hear. Okay. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounding great, and, and we 
the better you sing, the better we play. So I'd also like to thank our musicians, young and old, from near and far. Dr. Mark Norman, our conductor. You made it fun and educational for us today. You never know what's going to come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like, to, I'd like to thank the church and the staff here. I'd like to thank the music director, Greg Santa Cruz. He's been great to work with. It's a beautiful church, and um, we'd love to come back next year and have us. I'd say uh, some tuba Christmases uh, rent a facility and either they've got to pay for it or find a sponsor, but I thought, well, it, it'd be great to get the church uh, involved and, and, it's, and it's worked out great. We've been a great audience and, uh, and helped publicize the event. And uh, I've loved coming here to work with you. If, if you would like to help uh, pay for the heat and lights and custodial staff, um, you can leave a contribution on your way out. After we play our last song, the, the next song is going to be Joy to the World. We'll, we'll play it three times through, and we'd like the audience to sing along with us on the two repeats. Uh, the last verse would be He Rules the World. And uh, when, we played, when we played our last song, um, all the musicians will stand up for what we call a tuba bow and we'll hold our instruments up and we'll remain standing for a minute or two um, so you can take a picture or two. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 